Genesis chapter 13. Um, I, I'm so excited to finally preach these verses to our church. I shared them with our, uh, I shared these verses with our serve team back in December. And I have just been waiting anxiously to now share them with our church. Genesis chapter 13, verse 8. So Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we're close relatives. It's not the whole land before you. So basically what's happening is we have Abraham, we have Lot, their family members. Both families are growing. They're taking over the land and they need more space. They're, they're, uh, their shepherds are fighting, the animals are fighting, the families are fighting. It's just a mess. Look what he goes on to say. Isn't the whole land before you? Let's, let's part company. And then look what Abraham says. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. Just whatever, whatever you want to do, go, go do that, and I'll, I'll go the opposite way. So Abraham releases Lot. He lets Lot go. He, he trusts God. And here is God's response now in verse 14. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had departed from him, notice that. God didn't speak till Lot left. But once Abram surrendered and released Lot, God, God starts talking. Look around from where you are to the north, the south, the east, and the west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I'll make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that anyone, uh, if anyone could count the dust, then, um, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land. This is the verse, by the way, we, we're calling this here taking ground. This is where this comes from, verse 17. This is the, the word of the Lord God gave me. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land for I'm giving it to you. The land represents any area of your life where you need God in that, in that thing. God said, walk it, believe me for it, I'm going to give it to you. So Abram went to live near the trees of Mamre in Hebron, where he pitched his tents. Then he built an altar to the Lord. Amen. All right, January 1, I preached fight back. January 8th, I preached press in. And now on the 15th, this third week, I want to preach on look up. Look up. Everybody say, look up, look up, look up, look up. Father, we give you praise and glory for your word, just for what you're doing in our church and in our lives. Thank you that no one is watching this service by accident. I pray that people today, right now, would have divine encounters with the Holy Spirit in hospital rooms, in hotel rooms, in their homes, in correctional facilities as they listen to the podcast in the car, meet with your people, I pray. Release healing today, release wisdom, release strength to your people. In Jesus' name, come on, everyone said amen. amen. And amen, amen, thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. So uh, God makes a promise to Abram who would become Abraham. He, he makes a promise that in Genesis 12, I'm gonna bless you. Uh, I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to bless everything that pertains to you. I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And um, God is now beginning this walk, this relationship with his first man of faith, Abraham. And Abraham is learning the walk of faith. He is learning how to trust God. He's learning how to obey God. He's, he's learning to trust what God is saying to him. And God tells Abraham, we're I'm going to show you where to go. I'm going to lead you where to go. I'm going to, I'm going to lead and guide you along the way. And um, I, I love this because God told Abraham in, in chapter 12, I don't know if you've ever seen this. He said, leave your family, leave familiar, leave your, your, uh, your wife's family, like leave everybody and start fresh. That, that's what God tells Abraham to do in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. I love verse 4. So Abraham left with Lot. Isn't that awesome? God just said, leave everybody. And Abraham's like, you got it. Lot, let's go. <laughs> I love that Abraham, his first obedience is disobedience. I love, like he obeys, kinda. Anybody grateful for this already? You're like, okay, all right, good. Praise God, okay. Because God's like, don't, don't take anybody with you. 
And he's like, all right, Lot, we got it. We got to pack up. We got to go. And, uh, and all of us have a lot to get rid of. <laughs> we all do. We all, have, we all have things that we're obeying God, but we're, we're kind of bringing along some comfort and some old ways of thinking. And, and, and by the way, Lot was nothing but a headache for Abram. And I think by the time we get to chapter 13, and we get to this point in, in verse 9, Abraham is realizing, okay, I've got to do this God's way. And, and I hope even for our church family as we're now in the beginning of the year, we're, I think people are wrestling with this thought of like, okay, I, I got to do this God's way. I, I've done it my way. I've done it. I've tried to do this uh, adding God to the equation, but he hasn't been first. He hasn't been center. He hasn't been everything. But I really want to do this God's way. I'm ready, I'm ready to do what the Lord is leading me and calling me to do. I'm willing to obey. I'm willing to do whatever the Spirit of God tells me to do. I think that's where Abraham gets in chapter 13. And so what you're going to find at the beginning of chapter 13, we don't have time to read it, but Abraham builds an altar. He builds an altar. Um, I don't know what happened when he built that altar, but I think the Spirit of God probably started dealing with him and said, all right, so what are we going to do about Lot? I told you to leave everybody. You haven't left everybody. So, so from this altar moment, from this prayer moment, from this church service, Abraham comes to Lot and he releases him. And if we're going to take ground, that's what we're doing in 2023. We're taking ground in our marriage. We're taking ground in our mind. We're taking ground in our emotions. We're taking ground in our, in our health. We're taking ground in our purity. We're taking ground in our prayer. We're taking ground. And if we're going to take ground, anybody want to take some ground this year? I want to take ground. I don't want to lose ground. And I also don't want to just put it in park and just wait. No, I want to take ground. I, I believe we can move forward. And if we're going to move forward, we're going to take ground. Firstly, we're going to have to let go. Let go. Let go. He, he says, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, I'll, I'll go to the left. I love this. He, he says, let's, let's part company. Let's, let's release each other. It's all good. I love you. You love me. But, but we're going to have to separate in order for me to fulfill what God has called me to do. Now, here's the deal. This was Abraham's prerogative, and it was Abraham's moment, and Lot should have deferred. Lot should have said, man, I'm just blessed to, like, be around you. Like, God's blessing is on you, and, man, whatever you touch seems to turn to gold. And Like, you tell me, Abraham, you're, you're now the prophet of the Most High God. Like, you tell me where to go, and I'll go. But Lot doesn't defer. Lot was wrong. Lot was greedy. Lot was opportunistic. And so when Abraham says, hey, brother, go, go where you want to go, he was releasing Lot to make a decision that though Lot was greedy and opportunistic, Abraham knew that he was blessed. <laughs> and I'll take the blessing of God over an opportunity. And I'll take the provision of God over greed. And I'll take what God can do in my life over what I can do in my life. So Abraham learned to let go. And he said, Lot, do whatever you want. Because I am not limited by your greed. I'm not limited by your dishonor. I'm not limited by what you've done to me. I'm not limited by your next decision. My God is bigger than whatever you decide to do. And everybody's got to get that mentality. Everyone has to have a bigger mindset as we enter into this year that I'm not limited by what others do, that God is bigger than the actions of others, and God is a sustainer even if other people are opportunistic and greedy and dishonoring. I'm, I'm, Lot is small, but I'm not going to become small. Lot's got small faith, but I'm not going to have small faith. I'm going to have big faith in a big God that knows that a big God can sustain me in every season of my life. Lot cannot limit you when you have a limitless God. So Lot goes, well, Abram, I mean, okay, let me, I guess I'll pray about it. Like, 
Uh, I, guess, I guess we'll move to Sodom, I guess. Well, if you can imagine this, just imagine, I mean, we live in Vegas, so it's actually very easy to imagine. Just arid desert everywhere you look, and then there's this big, giant, shining city. And Lot's like, I guess we'll go over there. Right. My daughter plays eeny, meeny, miny, mo, but she always lands on what she wants. <laughs> it's like, honey, I think you kind of... She'll always cheat. I think that was Lot. He's like, well, I guess I'll pray, but I guess we'll just, I guess we'll go to Sodom. I guess we'll pick the best city, the best land with the most resource and the most water and the most food. I, I guess, Abram, if you want us to. And Abraham said, yeah, go for it. Go for it. You, you take Sodom and greed and, and I'll, I'll take that forest over there with the blessing of God. And let's see what God will do. <laughs> Lot had his eyes on the best land. Abraham had his eyes on God. Lot was opportunistic. Abraham knew that God was bigger than one moment. Don't you dare quit in a moment of challenge. God is bigger than one moment. God is bigger than one opportunity. God is bigger than, than, than one trial. God is bigger than one season. God is bigger than one recession. God is bigger than the latest inflation number. Hello. All right. Okay. Lot was thinking about right here, right now. Abraham knew God was bigger than right here, right now. God is bigger than one opportunity. He's bigger than one mistake. God is bigger than one moment, and he's bigger than one season. So you're going to have to let go and let God do a work in your life. There, there was a man who was under attack in Second Chronicles um, chapter 25. He, 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 had, he was a king who had come under attack, and so he hires an army to go to battle. And he hires this army to go to battle, and the prophet of God speaks to him and says, uh, don't go to battle, God's not in the battle. You don't need to go to battle. You don't need to fight. So the king says this in Second Chronicles 25 verse 9. He says, well, what about the 100 talents I paid for these Israelite troops? Like, I, I've, I've spent all this money. What, what, what do I do? And the prophet says, I love what the man of God says, the Lord can give you much more than that. I just lost 100 talents. But God can give you much more than that. Can I tell you, this, this has happened in our own life where there's been times in my wife and I's life that we won't get into detail, but where we felt shorted and we felt... Uh, dishonored, and we felt like, hey, you were supposed to do this. Hey, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. And, and God gave me this word for our own life. Don't, don't shrink to the smallness of their small mentality. Because God said, I can give you much more than that. Abraham, God can give you much more than Sodom. He can give you much more than Gomorrah. He can give you much more than that opportunity. God can give you much more than what Lot is after. God can give you much more than that. God can give you much more than the pain of that last divorce. God can give you much more than the sickness and disease that you're fighting right now. God can give you much more than the job you lost. God can give you much more than the child that broke your heart. God can give you much more. Much more than that. And so I'm believing in the God of much more and I'm not going to obsess over the hundred talents of silver. When Abraham lets Lot go, it's forgiveness. I love that he says, let's part ways. That, it's actually one of the best words for forgiveness. The, the word forgive means to let go, to push away to throw away. The, the idea of throw away is not like we don't throw away people, but we, we throw away the pain. Like I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm actually going to get rid of it. I love this. I'm going to release it. Abraham releases Lot. Abraham lets Lot go. And every one of us is going to have to let go of disappointment, let go of unforgiveness, let go of what maybe didn't work in order to take ground, in order to move into what God has for us. You will never take ground, you will never grow, you will never walk in the promises of God with a bitter heart. Um, 
I, I recently, when I was preaching, I said, have you prayed about it? Well, I got another question. Who do you need to forgive? <laughs> do y'all hate my questions? Are y'all tired of my, I'm like, pastor, we're tired of your questions. Who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to forgive? Let it go. Let it go. Stop holding on. You, you hate them and they don't even know it. You're up at night and they're asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Amen. Yeah. You're journaling about them. <laughs> you got to let them go. I, I, this is not easy. This is not convenient. This, is, this isn't a fast process. This doesn't happen overnight. But who do you need to forgive? Yeah. Who do you need? To, I'll forgive them when they apologize. You know, what, what's so weird is that most of the people that we need to forgive wouldn't even know how to apologize. Yeah. And if they did, it wouldn't be good enough because they'd say it all dumb anyway. And <laughs> who do you need to forgive? And for others, they might give you the best apology, but if, if bitterness is in your heart, their apology won't be enough anyway. Because true forgiveness is only born by the Spirit of God anyway. Who do you need to let go? What lot do you need to get rid of? What do, you, what do you need to move on from? What do you need to release? What do you need to part ways with? What, uh, one author uh, recently, I was, I was reading his book, and he talks about how everyone deals with trauma, drama, your daddy, and your mama. Isn't that so good? Trauma, drama, your daddy, and your mama. Uh, everyone in this room and everyone online probably needs to forgive one of those four people. Who do we need to forgive? Who do we need to let go? And say, you know what? God is so much more than a past mistake. God is so much more than what they did to me. God is so much, and, I'm, and it's not easy to forgive and I don't want to forgive, but I, but I have to let go in order to walk in what God has for me. Look what Hebrews chapter 12 verse five says. I don't think I gave this to you guys. I'm sorry, but it says, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Think about that, that, that we, can, we could fall short and not receive the grace of God. Why? And now he's going to say how this happens. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you. Corrupting many. Watch that, corrupting many. A root of bitterness corrupts many. How, why does a root of bitterness corrupt many? Because you can never just be bitter with one person. If Abraham doesn't forgive Lot, he'll always have a root of bitterness that'll affect every other relationship. The root system affects every relationship. So Abraham says, I got to let go. And, I, and I'm going to be the bigger man. I'm not going to claim territory. I'm not going to say this is mine and that's yours. I'm not going to give Lot a couple of acres and take on Lot. Whatever you want, go ahead and take it. Because God is my source. Jehovah Jireh is my God. El Shaddai is my God, the God of more than enough. He's, he's going to take care of me. So Lot, you go ahead and choose. And, and I'm going to let you choose. And then after I let you choose, I'm going to let God choose for me. Oh, this is so good. What I'm preaching to you right now will make your life so much bigger. Here's why. Because if you'll listen to what I'm saying, it'll make your mind bigger. And it'll make your spirit bigger. And then consequently, it'll make your decision making bigger. Do y'all love your pastor still? Okay, okay, we're still, okay, you still like me? Okay, number two. A after you let go, you gotta look up. You gotta look up. So the Lord said to Abram, look around from where you are to the north, south, east, and west. All the land you see, I will give you. Okay. Once Abraham let go, God spoke. Okay, Ooh, I just got goosebumps, sorry. I'm reading my notes, fired up. Abraham let, uh, excuse me, Abraham gave Lot the choice and God gave Abraham the land. Oh my gosh. Abraham was the bigger person. He had the bigger spirit. He, he refused to be small like Lot and he goes, hey, take whatever you want, take it. Because Abraham did that, God goes, as far as your eye can see, it's yours. Watch this, including Sodom. 
Lot goes, I'm going to take that. And Abraham's like, cool. And then God's like, that's actually yours too, dog. <laughs> Lot's going to actually be renting that from you. Like he thinks that's his. It's actually not his. That's, that's yours too. <laughs> wow. Good. Come on. Yeah. This is so cool. So and God, God asks Abraham a question. Do you see it? Yeah. Can, can you see it, Abraham? Can you see the possibility? Can can you expand your vision to see what I can do? Can lots, lots of only looking at the bright lights of Sodom. Look at all of, all of it's yours. Not just one city, not just one region. All of it's yours. To the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. Because you trusted me with a lot. Because you trusted me with that moment. Because you chose a big spirit. I'm now going to give you a big inheritance. But we have to pray what the psalmist prayed in Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes. Open my eyes to see the possibilities in 2023. Open my eyes to see my future. Open my eyes to, to see what God's doing in my relationship. Open my eyes to see what God is doing in my heart. Open my eyes to see what the Lord, God, open my, because my eyes have become dim and dull to the promises of God and to the things of God and to the purpose of God. And so I'm praying again as I start this new year, God, open my eyes to whatever you want to do because God, you're asking the question, can you see? So I'm going to have to open my eyes spiritually to all that God is doing so that I can see the possibility. Hear me. Abraham did not feel cheated. He did not feel robbed. Abraham did not feel like he missed out when he let Lot go. Why? Because Lot wasn't his source. Ooh. His eyes were on the possibilities of God. <laughs> and God said, Abraham, because you let go, because you forgave, because you trusted me, what do you want? You, you asked Lot, Lot, where do you want to go? That has some authority. But check this out. Now God says, Abraham, where do you want to go? Wow. If Abraham would have tried to control Lot, You don't get this invitation from heaven. I don't even know. It's like I'm, I'm preaching this and I don't even know how to give total verbiage to what I'm trying to say. But, but what I know is, is that we can get so offended with people that we try to either control or manipulate or withhold forgiveness or stay in bitterness. And, and, and we think that somehow we're controlling them, but in reality, it's controlling us. And it's stopping the flow of the impossible, beautiful promises of God where God goes, what, well, what do you want? Because we can't even think about what we want because we're just trying to stop them. But because we've let go and trusted God and we're living with a clean heart and we're living with a pure heart and we've said, I'm, I'm going to forgive. Uh, whatever I got to do, I'm going to let go and I'm going to trust God. God is bigger than that. God is bigger than them. God is bigger than what happened. God is bigger than last year. God is bigger than, God is bigger and when I get to that point, now God goes, what do you want? You gave Lot the option, now I'm going to give you the option. <laughs> I think I'm fired up because I, I, I'm starting to hear the Holy Spirit tell me that. I'm just hearing it. What do you want for this church, bro? I don't know if the Holy Spirit says bro to me, but I kind of feel like that. <laughs> Dog, what do you D-A-W-G, what you want, dog? I don't know. I, I, I'm getting this thing from the Spirit of God going, what do you want for City Light? What do y'all want to believe for? Y'all want to believe small? Y'all want to be a little community church and reach just a couple of people? Or do you want to reach this city? Do you want to reach the world with the gospel? Do you want to help more people, feed more people, help more people, love more people, serve more people? What do you want? What do you want to do with this music program? What do you want to do with the youth ministry? What do you want to do with the children's ministry? You want to just... Do you want to stay safe and small? Or do you want to believe big? And something in me is going, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to believe that way. I want to believe big for the promises of God. Here's another question. Where could you be in a year if you obey God? Where would your faith level be? Your joy level be? Your peace level be? Where would your marriage be? Your relationships be? Where would your health be? Where, where would you be financially in a year if you said yes to the 
to the promise and process of God. Because here's the promise of God, 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The scripture says this, the eyes of the Lord, they search the whole earth in order to strengthen those. Watch this, God's going, I'm ready to strengthen. We, we talked about blessing, what, what God can do. Strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. God goes, I'm trying to get behind somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to encourage, I'm trying to strengthen somebody. I'm trying to bless somebody. God is looking, and I want to be found. And I hope you want to be found. There's an old song that Dr. Ron Canole used to sing, if you could use anybody, if you could use anything, you can use me. And I just want to be there, and I want our church to be there, and I want your business to be there, and I want your marriage. God, if you can use any marriage, use our marriage to strengthen other married couples. God, if you could use any parents, use us to be a voice to other parents. If, God, if you could use any Christian, use me in this city to, to, be, a, to be salt and light. God, if you can use anybody's voice, use my voice. If you can use anybody's gifts, talents, and abilities, use my gifts, talents, and abilities. God, if, if, if you're looking for people to bless and strengthen, here I am. He's looking. He's looking for partners in the earth. Wow. Woo, lastly. Boy, I like this sermon. I don't like all my sermons. I like this one. <laughs> Number three, let me have Freddie come back up. Light a fire. Light a fire. Let go. Look up. Light a fire. In Mamre of Hebron, Abraham built an altar to the Lord. <laughs> You're going to have to build an altar. <sighs> the altar represents worship, sacrifice, giving, trust. The altar represents the presence of God, the fire of God, and the eyes of God. In Exodus chapter 20, God said, anytime you build me an altar, never forget this, anytime you build me an altar, anytime you pray, anytime you seek me, anytime you fast like we've been doing this week, anytime that you give, anytime that you sacrifice, anytime that you serve, anytime that you make your life revolve around the presence of God, anytime you build me an altar, God said two things will always happen. He said, I will be there and I will bless you there. That's in the Bible. That's Exodus 20. He said, anytime you build me an altar, which by the way, represents the throne of God. Remember that in the book of Revelation, the throne of God isn't like over there somewhere and we all look that way. The, the, the throne of God is in the dead center of heaven. All of heaven centers around, surrounds the throne. So when Jesus says, put me first, seek his kingdom first, he's not talking about one, two, three, four, five. He's talking about put me in the dead center of your life and let everything revolve around me. And when you build an altar and you pray and you fast and you seek God and you give and you sacrifice and you serve and, and, and you forgive and you, and, you, and you become a big spirited person, what happens is your life revolves around the altar. And God says, every time you build me an altar, I will be there, but I'm not just going to show up. I will bless you there. I'll bless you there. Again, I'm not putting a limitation. I don't know what bless you there means. I just know that's what he said. Build me an altar. Your ability to build an altar in your life will directly determine your spiritual success and walk with God. No altar, no victory. No altar, no freedom. No altar, no presence. No altar, no peace. When you don't feel like reading the word, but you build an altar. When it's cold and rainy outside, like it's been here in Vegas, we haven't seen rain in like 50 years and here it is and it won't leave. And you don't wanna get ready and come to church, but you get to church, you're building an altar. When you trust God with your tithe and offering, you're building an altar. Hundreds and hundreds of people in our church who joined in with the miracle offering, we built an altar. Awesome men and women of God every Sunday morning that 
get to Sierra Vista at 6 a.m. and help set up and are there till 2.30 p.m. tearing down, they're building an altar. Th things are now, s s I'm now centering my life around the kingdom, not around me, around. And God said, I will bless you there. He, he did it in Hebron. Let's all learn a Hebrew word. Everyone say Hebron. Congratulations, you're a theologian. This word Hebron means friendship, alliance, to be joined together in covenant. Oh my God. James said, don't be friends with the world, the world's system, world's thinking, world's ways. Don't be friends with the world because friendship with the world is, is enmity towards God. Abraham said, Lot, you go take the world. I'm going to go build a friendship, an alliance. I'm going to go build a covenant with God. I'm not building an altar just anywhere. I'm doing it in Hebron. I'm, I'm, I'm letting God know, God, I want to be your friend. I want to be in an alliance with you. I want to be joined together in covenant with you. Abraham is the father of our faith. And what makes Abraham's faith so special is his ability to build an altar. God gave him a promise in Genesis 12, I'm going to bless you. You know what Abraham did? Built an altar. Started having conflict with Lot. You know what he did? Genesis 13, built an altar. Released Lot to Sodom and was probably dealing with his own like, oh my gosh, what have I just done? So he went up to Hebron and he built an altar. And then in Genesis 22, when God says, I want Isaac, he built an altar. Abraham didn't just have some kind of ethereal faith. Oh, I have faith. No. His faith was proven and shown in his ability to build an altar. Hebron in Mamre. Mamre means fully assimilated, well-fed, abundantly supplied. <laughs> By the way, Sodom means scorched. <laughs> you go deal with the world if you want to. They're getting scorched. I mean, just never enough peace, never enough joy, never enough sex, never enough money, never enough Never a fancy enough car, never a new enough this, never a blingy enough this. It's just, it's just dead. It's just scorched. It's just. Ain't that true? Anybody? Ain't that true? We're not judging anybody. It's just, it's the world system. The world system in 1 John is, it's the pride of life and it's the lust of the flesh and it's the love of money. And you never have enough of it, so you're always needing more. But in the kingdom of God, when you build an altar, you're fully assimilated. You're well fed. You're abundantly supplied. <laughs> I'm going with the kingdom. I'm going to build me an altar. I'm going to stay right there in the presence of God. I'm going to stay tender towards the presence of God. I'm going to stay broken in the presence of God. I'm going to bow my knee in the presence of God. I'm going to love people in the presence of God. I'm not a career Christian. I'm not a... I'm not a preacher who has to be a Christian because this is what I do for a career. I, my whole life is built around the presence. And God blessed them there. And God will bless you there. Look up. Let go. Light a fire. I believe God has big things, big plans, big promises for you in 2023. Watch this though. You got to have a big heart. Can't be small like Lot, greedy. My, 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 my. Me, 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 me. You have to live with a big spirit. Big prayers, big sacrifice, big altars. Where God can do big things. Wow. 
praise the Lord. Anybody getting this today? Anybody getting this? I just, man, I feel that. Glory. I want you to join me. I want you to grab um, your phone. And I want you to open up your little notes page. Y'all have a little notes page. Even if you don't have an iPhone, you have something like it. (laughs) I'm not teasing. I'm saying like, right? We all kind of probably have something like that. I want you to write down what you're believing God for this year at some point throughout today. At the, at the top of what I'm believing God for, I have my, my phrase for the year. Radical generosity, radical harvest. Radical generosity, radical harvest. That's what I'm believing God for this year. This year I'm sowing my speaking engagements into the house of God, uh, into city lights. So Tuesday we preached in Houston. I didn't get a check. Went directly to City Light Church. And I'm sowing a lot of money this year into the, into the house and into the building. Why? Not just for radical generosity, radical harvest. If I, if I told you how much that is, it might be jarring. Because <laughs> the devil tells me every day how much it is. Uh, but I, I have a little scripture. I don't know if you've ever read this scripture. It's in 2 Chronicles 25. Nine, it says, the Lord can give me much more than that. And I feel like praying in tongues tonight. So, so I'm sowing this year. Anytime you see me traveling, we're, we're sowing offerings right into City Light Church exclusively. And we're going to pour money into the building. So that's what I'm, so the word of the Lord to me was radical generosity. But, Jabin, it's not going to stop there. You're going to have radical harvest. That's what I'm believing God for. And then I wrote down all the fun things I'm believing God for, which are none of your business. Can you write down some dreams, some promises, some things, some expectation you're believing for this year? Don't consult the White House, CNN, Fox News, Newsmax, Joe Rogan, Gary V. Patrick Bed David, Dr. Fauci, don't consult any of them. When, when you write this stuff, don't, don't ask any, don't ask Lot's permission. <sighs> Say amen, somebody. Don't, don't go to the world and ask permission. Don't go to Sodom and ask for permission. Believe God. I got some things on here that cannot come to pass in the world system. It's going to have to be a supernatural harvest. Am I all right tonight? Is that all right? Let go. Look up. Light a fire. And you watch what God will do in your life. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for my friends, my beautiful church family. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so proud of their faith. I'm so just excited about what you're going to do in their life this year. Lord, would you meet them at their altar like never before? Meet them in their giving and their prayers and their fasting and their time in the word. Meet them, Lord. Meet them in their worship. Meet them, God, this year. In all of the, in all of the taking ground, Lord, take ground in our heart. (sighs) Have our heart, Lord. You can have our hearts, Lord. We will not become cold and small and bitter towards people this year. We're going going to to leave and, and live with a sweet spirit this year. Lot, you want to go left? We'll go right. It's all good. God's got me. You want to go right? I'll go left. God's got me. You go down to Sodom, but I'm going to build me an altar. And God's going to meet me there. And God's going to bless me there. Thank you, Lord. 
Everybody out loud say, Father, in Jesus' name, I let go, I look up, and I light a fire. Amen. 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 Wow. 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 Let's give God the glory. All right. I'm done preaching. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you his peace. I place the name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon your life, upon your family. Where there have been walls, I declare walls are falling. Where there have been mountains, mountains are moving. Where there have been valleys, valleys are rising up. Where there's been crooked paths, crooked paths are being made straight. Where there's been drought, there is rain. Where there has been sickness, there is healing. Where there has been anxiety, there is peace. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week.